The next talk will be by Ross Moore that I that several years ago saved our life with XYPIC, making it possible to do commutative diagrams. And he will talk about tagged PDF, derived HTML, and aspects of accessibility. This will, will be a pre-made video, and questions and answers will be on the YouTube chat, not in presence. We're going to be talking about accessibility of documents, in particular documents created with LaTeX. Um, we really need to have an understanding of what we mean by accessibility. And this is what um, Google says, very general definition of what accessibility means, right? The practice of making information available and usable for as many people as possible. Okay. And there's no actual mention here of people with disabilities. Okay. Now, if you take the viewpoint that those of us who are fully sighted and perfectly capable of reading the information don't need any extra ability to access information, then of course the next group of people that as part of the as many people as possible will be those with disabilities. Okay, I'm cheating a little bit. If we move up here to, to what Google really says, or what it says, and what has come to be what most people think of as, of, as accessibility, and it's to be, to design things to be usable by people with disabilities, okay. But the general definition actually means that it's, a, it's actually more than that, right. So if, if you do anything, if you include any feature in your document that makes it easier for anybody to read, then you would expect more people are going to read that document. And so you are enhancing accessibility according to the general definition, okay? And we'll see that kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> but let's shift on to, to this particular website, which you'll see is related to the uh, Section 508 of the United States Rehabilitation Act. So what is mandated here is that federal agencies develop, procure, maintain and use ICT, so information, well, basically information technology in a manner that ensures that federal employees having disabilities have comparable access to and use of information and data comparable relative to other federal employees. Okay, and then unless doing so would impose an undue burden, okay. But it also requires that the agencies ensure that members of the public with disabilities have comparable access to the publicly available information and services. In other words, the electronic documents that they may be producing have comparable access to is, the, is really the key phrase here. Okay, so now if we want to have a look at the kinds of things that uh, has been worked out um, and should be done for people with disabilities, the WAI, that's the Web Accessibility Initiative, and this page, ARIA, standing for Accessible Rich Internet Applications, this is really the place to look. And there is an awful lot of information in here. There's even links to conformance checkers, which are which we will we'll be using later, okay? Also with the WAI, um, there is this page, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. That's what WCAG stands for, okay? So these are two very important websites um, for how to make web applications or 
documents that are to be accessed via the web, um, how to make them more accessible to people with different kinds of disabilities. A lot of that is discussed on these pages. Okay, but what we want to do is to have a look at accessibility and in particular navigation through um, PDF documents and um, then subsequently HTML documents as well and see how some of the the ideas that are on these last two pages uh, act can actually be put into practice. Let's have a look at some of the um, navigation features that one has in a PDF document. Okay, so the one that's showing here um, in Acrobat Pro, um, it's got 185 pages, so it's quite long. Um, and generated with LaTeX, you often can get a um, set of bookmarks, okay, and we see the bookmarks listed down in this panel on the left hand side. And there's quite a lot of them, and they represent significant parts of the document, okay, including tables of contents, lists of figures and tables, etc., um, the main sections, so each of the different fish reports, and here is a introductory section. Some of the um, technicalities here are discussed and the main results from each of the other sections. Okay. Notice that there's also a, bit, a slight tree-like structure. You can open out some of the sections into other significant subset subsections. Okay. That's Really, it's a, vi it's just a visual way of moving, um, of navigating through the document. You need to be able to see the bookmark sections itself, as well as the information in the, in the main window. Okay. Let's compare this briefly with the table of contents. Okay. You have the same kind of thing, but now those tree-like structures have been opened out and you can see the different some of the different subsections the ident the information is not identical but certainly very similar and um, and there's hyperlinks on the right hand side going to, to where you want to go to the, the 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 kind of subsection and you can use a button up here in order to get back and, and so on so you can see this is can be used as a method of navigating the document. Okay, but one big difference between the table of contents and the bookmarks is that when you use a link on the table of contents, you move away from that table of contents to somewhere else, and you need to go back if you want to try and use it for something else. Whereas with the bookmarks, the bookmarks panel is there for forever unless you want to get rid of it, push it away. Okay. okay, so you can get it back. Okay, um, list of tables, right? Okay, this is probably more useful for someone involved in the industry itself and wants to find, to locate a particular table. So George's Bank Haddock, um, and we go straight to the table and it makes for easy navigation and so easy access to that kind of information. Again, it's using hyperlinks. We can regard it as an accessibility feature because it certainly helped a lot of fully sighted people to find where the information they want may be and then get access to it. Okay. Um, another kind of information is, okay, so let's suppose we go down to say here, and we have a look. So now we're actually reading some of the technical information and we start to see, oh, okay, NRCC, oh, what's that? Well, it looks like an active link, so you can click on it and you see that it is an acronym for the Northeast Regional Coordinating Council. Okay, and so then go back and okay, back and then find your way through. Assessment Oversight Panel, AOP, oh, well, okay, well, Clearly that's stands, the AOP stands for the Assessment Oversight Panel. 
one could click on the, the link and, and verify that in, in the, right, we're in one of the glossary sections, okay. But once you, if you've got it there, then it's already been told to you. And having seen it once, well, okay, down here, you wouldn't bother to be looking at it again because you've read it and remember. Let's look at this same document in a different PDF viewer, okay? So this one is now, uh, it's not Acrobat anymore, it's a viewer on the Macintosh. And if we go and have a look at that same place, okay, look what happens when I hover the mouse over the, the hyperlink for that acronym. It actually gives you a small little version of the page that you would go to if you clicked on it and you can see the you can see the expansion of the acronym up there in the top the top left hand corner okay and it also tells you if you click where you would which page number you would go to okay so different pdf browsers can handle things in different ways but again this these pop up pictures are definitely really only helpful to fully sighted readers using a visual view of the document. But let's return now to Acrobat and I'll show you another way of doing navigation, this time using the tags panel. Okay, and here it is opened at least to the highest levels of structure. The tags panel shows you the structure of the document, the article and then the highest levels. And you'll note that the names here include ARIA, right? The accessible rich internet applications okay and so look, these particular divisions of your document are called um, landmarks and we'll we'll get to see that later with html okay most of the information is in here similar to the bookmarks except now instead of having the titles of the sections we now have the structure so it's section point one, section point two, etc. Okay, and all the way through. So our first fish stock is actually going to be this one. Atlantic Wolfish. And you can get to see the actual text. All right, so I can click on this and we can go to the actual text. Section will have, will include the section number. Okay. And so you can actually see how every piece of structure within your text, including divisions of things using certain fonts and other fonts or have special meanings, they're all captured in, in, in the structure. There's a sense in which this is similar to bookmarks, but I, I think it's more like bookmarks on steroids because you can get to absolutely every little piece of information about um, within the document. Okay, and in, in particular, each of the pieces of text and what structure they're associated with. Okay, let's return to the beginning of the document again. And I'm gonna show you another kind of navigation based entirely on the keyboard. Well, apart from an initial click to in, in, have focus in the right panel, if I hit the tab key, then I move into the to part of the document. And if I hit it again, Okay, and you can see what's happening. We're moving through all those pieces that are active hyperlinks. And shift tag takes you back. But what is this first one? It's the logo, and you can see that by hovering over it, you get a description of the logo, but at the end of it, it says skip to main. So if I click on that, I skip automatically to the very beginning, the beginning of the main section, the one here called ARIA-MAIN, okay, which, is, which I've skipped over all of the complementary information straight into the place where you would like to begin reading, okay. Assistive technology can use this to get yourself to places within the document and then start reading from that point. Okay, on the keyboard, hitting the return key is what takes you to the target of the hyperlink. This is another way of uh, 
navigating through the document, which is more relevant to people with visual disabilities. Okay, let's have a look at that PDF document in a new format, uh, having been converted into HTML, or we talk about it being derived into HTML. Okay, um, from this website, you can get both to a copy of the PDF and also the what the derived HTML page looks like. So if we click on this link and here we go and we see that, okay, all the same kind of information is there. It's laid out quite nicely, so it's visually appealing, but it is also potentially more accessible to a person with some kind of, with kinds of visual impairment. In particular, let's have a look at what happens when the tab key, I just press the tab key and now it's gone to this link. Okay, so the link to, to main is definitely there. And if we keep hitting the tab key, then you see we have this navigation via the tabs, similar to what Acrobat could do in the PDF. Okay, and of course backwards with the shift tab. But when we have it in this form, then we can actually emulate what the situation, what it might look like to somebody with a visual impairment, such that they're only seeing a small portion of the screen at once. Okay, and so, Okay, so we can only see a small portion of the screen. Okay. When you are on an active part of the document, then if you hit the return key, then you will follow that hyperlink and you see it takes us into the glossary to where that particular acronym is explained. Okay, let's go back. Okay, but it also raises the question of, well, okay, if we're tabbing through a document via these active links, I mean, we come across a hyperlink, right? And so the question is, do we really want to follow that hyperlink? Or can we understand what the information is that it's going to, that we will find at that hyperlink um, by not having to follow it, okay? And that's an interesting question because that's, remember back when we looked at the PDFs and we had it, when we hovered it popped up with a little window showing us the expansion of, of an acronym as it was when we first looked at that. Can we do the same kind of thing in HTML? And the answer to that is a definite yes, yes indeed we can. Okay. Right, so the way that's done is to bring up an extra panel on the right hand side here called the developer tools. Okay, and then if you hit this little button here, then it now gives us a, a view of the document, very similar, not exactly the same, but very similar to the tags view in the PDF document. First, these four names here, banner complementary main content info, they are called landmarks and they correspond to sections of the document, reasonably large sections, okay, and they can have at the next level, they, the landmarks have, have regions, okay, and they have, a, so you can see the regions are corresponding to each of the sections in the PDF. And, and other pieces, right, in the complementary, then, right, so here we go, here's our table of contents, okay, and it starts off, so that paragraph is actually the header, the header there, the table of contents header, okay, then we go into the list, and you see we have list items in, in our lists, Okay, and so panel report and the link. Okay, note this has an extra, extra 
piece of text here. Section 1 starts on page 1. Okay. And then the static text of just the one itself. Okay. To somebody viewing this with full visual view understands that these numbers, these hyperlink numbers correspond to links to the various pages in the in the, what was the PDF document, okay? If you're limited in what you can actually see, then this text here will tell you, right? So in assistive technology, it's meant to read this text. So a screen reader is meant to read section one, starting on page one, it starts on page one, rather than just the number one, okay? Which gives you far more information than, um, than just looking at the page number, okay? It's telling you it's a section. The two comes from the, the label over the left-hand side, all right? So that's where it has been derived from, okay? It's come from there and starts on page 19, okay? The, okay, and all of that's been worked out, okay? So section six here, starting on page 59. Okay. This kind of extra hint here as to what the link is going to take you to is, um, it's part of the ARIA, those ARIA recommendations. Okay. It's a ARIA label, um, ARIA label text. And the idea is that in with assistive technology, you are meant to replace the static text with the with this extra link text, which which has more information in it. Right? Visually, you only need the 59 because you can see the context in which it's occurring. Okay, if you can't see that context, then this extra ARIA label text um, can be very useful to you. This time the web browser is Firefox. It's a particularly nice plugin which one can use. And you see it gives us all of this extra information over here. Okay. A inspector stands for accessibility inspector. Here is the terminology, the landmarks that we talked about. Here's links and all kinds of things. Right, this is a validation checker. It checks that all of those recommendations in the ARIA specification, have they been met? Okay, V stands for violations. There are no violations of any of the rules that it, or any of the recommendations that are made. There aren't even any warnings that things might not be quite correct, but I'm not quite sure of. MC stands for manual check. So a manual check is required. It can't say definitely that everything's okay. Um, and whereas P stands for pass. Okay. So of the total set of rules that have been checked here, 65 kinds of rules have been checked and a large number of them are, are passing, can be algorithmically determined to have been to be passing and whereas whereas a, a, a large number still well the claim is that they require manual checks um, and, and so those manual checks well you can have a look and see what what it's asking for okay so double click and it just takes a little while okay landmarks must identify content regions well, we saw in Google Chrome that they certainly did. Okay, so that, that test has been, is checked. And of course, the way they've been constructed algorithmically by LaTeX, we know that, they're going to, that this rule is going to be satisfied. So that manual check doesn't actually really need to be looked at. Okay, um, whereas there's a whole lot of passes there for all of the other things that have, that are specified under landmarks. Links is another interesting one to be to look at. Okay. 
manual checking, there's a couple of rules that need to be looked at, that are deserving to be looked at. The link text must describe the link target. Link text must describe the link target. Okay, so things like section one on page, whatever it was, um, again, that's been, that's been algorithmically created by LaTeX. So provided that is being done correctly, again, it doesn't really require manual checking of the result in the HTML because we know it's just going to work. Okay, and notice that 3,268 A tags, or in other words, hyperlinks, inter, um, internal and external, okay. It says to verify all of these. Well, there's no way you're actually going to manually check every single one. And you need to trust that the, uh, that the LaTeX programming has been done correctly, okay. Target focus must be in the content, in okay, in the content window. Well, everything's in the content window, right? These documents are being created with, these HTML documents are being created as just sitting inside one single window, the whole thing being in there. So again, the target focus remains in there when you, when you use a hyperlink to skip to somewhere else. So there's no need to do any checking there either. Okay, well, we can see that basically that all, all of these things are going to work. You're going to get a very, very good, satisfying all of well, the ARIA recommendations that are relevant to this document. So we can see that with this tag PDF document derived into HTML, we get very, very good accessibility checking um, <coughs> according to at least according to this accessibility inspector. Okay. Returning to Acrobat now on the PDF, we want to see how that extra ARIA information has been stored in the PDF file. Okay, so we having picked a structure element, so for a link, for a hyperlink, we want to find out its object properties we look at the attribute objects then we see that there are various attributes okay one is what should happen when you export this hyperlink into xml into an xml document another exporting the hyperlink into html but also with the aria attributes and so here we have there's actually two attributes here Okay, and you can see the ARIA label, right? So it's Appendix A starting on page four, okay, which we can see back in the, where that's come from, right? It's come, it's Appendix A starting on page four, okay. And the actual details of that um, are in section 0.05 which is what Appendix A is. Appendix A is section 0.05. Okay. Okay, here we see another use of an ARIA label. Okay. Here we have a list of the names of the AOP, right? And, okay, and they've also got um, footnotes to tell you their affiliations. They're down off the bottom of the page, okay? But if we have a look at see the panelist structure, okay, it has an attribute which tells you, well, two things. It tells you it's an item in a list, okay, because it's a list of various names, and that that particular element in the list is the AOP panelist number two, so the second one that's been listed there, okay? Thus, uh, some very specific information that to someone who's visually, fu fully visually aware, um, wouldn't need to be told that you've got a list of names here, 
But if you're using assistive technology and can only see a very small part of the text at any given time, then it is worth having this extra information to tell you exactly why this collection of words and letters is occurring at this point, what purpose is it serving, and um, and what else, what other information is available, right? Over in the structure tree, you can see that structurally, directly after the panelist, or in, in fact within the panelist structure, so after the name, the actual footnote occurs telling you the affiliation. And that's the kind of thing that also happens in the, um, in the HTML version. We, we, we thank uh, Ross for this overview of what accessibility means and I guess we can go to the next speaker.